Hello, my name is Jim, aka Dr. Cellini, and on today's episode, I'm going to walk you through, by almost popular demand, how much money I make or have made as a veterinarian. Let's get started. This is a fairy around steroids. This vet is from the North Carolina Zoo, this is from their Instagram page. He is cleaning this giraffe's hoof, has him trained in order to kind of rest his hoof right there. Headed conjointed cat. Still alive, it's got four ears. Please, if you don't mind, hit the like and subscribe button, um, as well as check out my Instagram and TikTok. My, my TikTok has grown way faster than I thought it would. I think that's just the nature of TikTok. Um, I'm even beating my brother, Michael, so that's a huge accomplishment for me. But anyway, if you want to check out my TikTok content, feel free. I post a lot of videos because it's quick and easy to do. Um, yeah. So let's get started. Where do we begin? So let's see. Um, and so I'm trying to calculate the earnings of my veterinary career. So I should probably just start in veterinary school. So that's easy. I made zero dollars in veterinary school. Actually, that's not true. I made negative one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in the form of a student loan. That's how much money I made in veterinary school. So yeah, I left veterinary school with a $125,000 student loan um, compounding at a 6% interest rate um, that I then deferred for as long as I possibly could, which is the dumbest thing I could have possibly done ever. Um, nobody really told me that was dumb, but that's what I did. Great. So we're off to a really good start. I know my student loan isn't that big compared to a lot of people's out there. I hear people who have like $300,000, $400,000 worth of student loans. Um, I know that's just like an insane amount of money. And I know my mine isn't that huge, but it's not nothing either. Um, but nonetheless, that's what I left veterinary school with. So my first job out of school was as a rotating intern. I mentioned this in my previous video um, at a practice called Veterinary Specialist of South Florida. Um, and I earned a intern salary, which is not by the hour, just a base, just a straight up salary of $28,000 on the year. And I calculated, and I asked some of my, some of my old intern mates this, I averaged a, somewhere between 60 to 100 hour work weeks. So let's conservatively put it at about 60 hour work weeks and $538 a week divided by 60 hour work weeks and I was making eight dollars and 97 cents an hour as an intern and that's assuming the low end I think I was actually working a lot more than that um so yeah um so I made twenty eight thousand dollars that year and deferring a student loan of my size and my interest rate for 12 months uh led to a loan growth of seventy five hundred dollars awesome. The next year I moved to Houston where I worked at Gulf Coast Veterinary Specialists. And again, I was an intern, but I was a neurology intern, um, what we call a specialty intern, which nowadays you, uh, a lot of people have to do in order, in order to get a residency, you have to do a specialty internship. Um, it's just an internship where you're just only in that one uh, discipline, in this case, neurology. That year, I believe I made $27,000 on the year. So let's calculate 27,000 divided by 52 weeks out of the year. That is a whopping $519 a week. Pretty great. Um, that internship I worked more, I had to have worked 70 to 80 hour work treats. So I'm putting in 70 hours a week. So if we divide that by 70, I was paid $7.42 an hour for my internship. Um, now, if we put my student loan in for two months at 6% interest deferred, 
my loan has now grown $15,000 above the initial $125,000 base amount. And it is now sitting at $140,000. So in the two years that I deferred my student loan, I lost $15,000 and I made after tax, my take home pay is $23,152 a year or $46,300 for two years. I forgot to factor this in, $46,300 was my take home pay for two years. Subtract the $15,000 that my student loan grew and you have about $31,000 worth of net take home pay for two years. Terrible, but it gets worse. My third year out of school, I worked as an emergency doctor years three and four and it gets a little bit better now because I'm actually making an adult salary. Um, I made, as an emergency doctor, the first year I made $98,000. I remember that because I didn't quite hit 100,000. Um, as an emergency doctor, my base salary was $85,000 a year, and then we would earn production on top of that. So if you, if you did enough stuff, um, you would earn a percentage. My percentage, I believe, was 21%. So I would earn anything above my base salary, I would earn 25% of. So over the course of a year, I uh, did $500,000 worth of stuff, like all the receipts and everything I did, surgeries, all the cases I saw, it all added up to $500,000. Um, I would have made 21% of that, which is $105,000 basically. So it's like whichever is higher, your base salary or your production. Um, so I didn't quite make a uh, hundred thousand. I made ninety-eight thousand um, dollars for my first job as an ER doctor. That produced a take-home pay of up to sixty-eight thousand five hundred twenty-one dollars. Um, I did start paying off my student loan at that point, and I paid off ten thousand dollars worth of my student loans to bring my student loan down to uh, one hundred and thirty thousand dollars that first year. All right, so my second year as an emergency doctor, uh, I actually did a little bit better. I was able to do more stuff and see more cases and kind of like function as a doctor better. My first year as a doctor, I mean, everybody's like this. You're, you're not going to be able to do that much uh, just because you're just new. Um, but my second year, I made a little bit more. Um, I made $118,000 on the year, which equates to, after taxes, a take home pay of $82,241 on the year. So not bad. Um, and I managed to pay off another $10,000 worth of my student loan, bringing my student loan down to $120,000 loan balance. So now here's where things get interesting. And again, I made giant mistakes. Um, my student loan, uh, beginning of my residency in 2013, my student loan was sitting at a balance of about $120,000. Um, I then agreed to do a residency, and year one of my residency, I made $28,000. So again, the same numbers as the last time, $28,000. Year two, I made $28,500. Year three, I made $29,000. Awesome. You can kind of get the idea that training through veterinary school and through the post school uh, programs, internships and residencies, it really takes a financial toll on you. It's terrible. Now, again, because I'm not smart, or at least I wasn't back then, I placed my student loan on deferment. And if we now have a student loan of $120,000, I sat on deferment for three years, earning 6% compounding interest, and I accrued an extra $21,600 worth of student loan interest. Great. So my student loan upon leaving my residency was 140, let's just call it $140,000, a little bit more than that, but let's just call it $140,000. So that $140,000 was essentially my starting loan burden once I started my real job, which was being a neurologist. 2016, I became a neurologist. I was board certified in the summer of 2017, but I started working as a neurologist in 2016. 
And here is where my pay obviously jumped. You know, I finished all these years of training and I finally have like a well-paying job. So to get into specialist vet pay a little bit, um, the way specialists are paid is, is similar to ER doctors and general practitioners. Um, specialists are paid generally, not always, I can't speak for everybody, but everywhere I've seen and talked to, um, specialists are paid generally based on a gross production, meaning you get a percentage of the totality in the things that you do. So again, let's assume that you do a bunch of stuff over the course of a year, whether, you know, if you're a neurologist, you're doing lots of MRIs and surgeries. If you're a soft tissue surgeon, you're just doing lots of surgeries. Um, internist, you're doing lots of diagnostic tests and like scopes and things like that. If the, the total kind of gross receipts, as they call it, you get 20, about 20 to 30% of that is what you'll get, depending on your market, depending on your experience, depending on your own just deal, uh, depending on, um, you know, some managers and some co uh, corporations, some hospitals are more generous than others, just by putting it bluntly. Um, but generally, you're looking somewhere between 20 to 30% of that gross production. So if you gross a million dollars worth of stuff in one year, and you're earning 20% of your gross, you'll make $200,000 a year. Pretty good money. If you're making 30%, you'll make $300,000 a year. Big difference, a lot more money. Um, but that's generally how specialists are paid. Most specialists too will have what's called a base salary. And that's really just there if for whatever reason you just have a really slow pay period, whether it's two weeks or every month, you'll earn your base salary, which is just to give you something. Um, and, and that's there just in case, like, say you go a week without doing anything and your, you know, pay period for that time is just really low and you didn't really earn any sort of commission. Well, you don't want to go two weeks and not have a single dollar uh, come in and not get paid anything. Um, some people have that deal set up. Some people are on production only. I don't like to work that way. Um, so there's a base salary. Um, my base salary coming out of my residency was $150,000 a year. Um, I didn't make that because I was able to produce, and I'm not gonna say how much exactly that I made as a neurologist, but I was able to produce enough to, to exceed that. Um, the average salary for a neurologist is somewhere, it's a huge range, but it's somewhere between about 125 to like 350 a year, I would say, huge range. And I can safely say I was like safely in the middle of that. Um, the reason it's so wide is because neurologists, and this is similar to most specialists too, neurologists can choose to be busy or choose to not be busy. You can do surgery or you can choose to be a medical only, uh, medical neurologist. Um, so that really will affect how much you're able to earn, how busy you want to be, how many procedures you want to do, because at the end of the day, a company or a hospital can only pay you as much as you're bringing in and doing. It's literally just a numbers game. You can only get paid so much. Um, so the busier you are, the more you get paid, generally is how that works. Again, not every deal is the same. Um, but over the course of my neurologist career, I have been able to uh, earn a good income. I'm very fortunate, I'm very lucky to be where I am right now. I say that all the time. Um, and I've been able to reduce my student loan payment to where my current balance is about $85,000 left in my student loan. So hopefully by the end of 2022, um, I, I think I can maybe pay it off by then. I've made some other changes in my life, which I'll get into in another video. Um, some sort of like financial and like cost of living moves, um, things like live in a duplex and rent out the other side to help reduce the cost of living by a lot. Stuff like that has really made me able to save more money uh, to put towards my student loan and get rid of it. Um, but uh, overall, that's where I'm sitting. Um, I'll provide a link in the description. There's a study out of the Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine that looked at the gender pay gap. And on there, you can see the differences and it just lists the average salaries by specialty in veterinary medicine. So I'll list that in the description. And again, I don't want to say exactly how much I make right now, but I'm in that range.
So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you got an idea as far as like what the process entails. Um, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button if you like this video. And hopefully I will get some more videos out this month. I've got a better schedule this month than last month, so I'll be churning out more videos. Um, my next video is going to be a little bit more controversial, and I plan on talking about some breed-specific topics. Um, my first video that I do on that is going to be about bulldogs and the fact that bulldogs, frankly, many, the vast majority are suffering just based on the fact that they're a bulldog and how they're shaped. So this is something I'm pretty passionate about. Um, okay, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you later. Thank you.